Hey guys, how are you going? In this video I'll be showing you how to set up virtual hosts for the Apache web server. So the reason why I'm doing this video is because many people over the past year and a half have asked me on YouTube how I serve all of my tutorials at youtube.local. So if you're one of those people, this will be the perfect tutorial for you. If you're not too sure what virtual hosts are, essentially once you've got them set up, you're able to convert or you're able to uh, make it so when you go in the browser at something like sample-project.local, you can make that URL point to your actual project directory on your file system. So typically, um, you may have seen something like this, um, where to view your project, you go to localhost slash projects slash sample dash project but in this video I'll be showing you how to convert something like this into something clean like this so it's going to be very easy to do and one of the main reasons to actually do this is to help uh, replicate your production environments because typically uh, when you deploy your website or project to production um, the actual uh, website is going to be something like blah 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 dot Com, and it won't contain things like subdirectories like this, for example. So, of course, having this virtual host set up is going to help you more accurately replicate that environment. Um, and also, it's going to look good during development. Of course, it's going to be much nicer to code and then view this URL in the browser compared to something like this. So, I do also want to mention that this tutorial is going to be ideal or best suited to people on Windows and using the ZAMP or WAMP Apache distribution. However, if you're not using ZAMP or WAMP or if you're on Mac or Linux, um, I do encourage you to still watch this video because uh, most if not all of the main steps are going to be the exact same. but. Um, you might need to do some uh, minor tweaking on your own environment to make it work. But anyway, uh, let's take a look at the actual contents of this sample project. So in the text editor, we can see right here, I've got this index.php file and it's within the sample-project directory. And this is found in C and then websites and then sample-project. So. As I said, we're going to make it so this URL, sample-project.local, is going to point to uh, this directory right here on my system. So of course, this PHP file simply just prints out, hello, I am the sample project. So uh, the first step is going to be on the Apache side. So uh, you first want to open up your Apache directory or folder. So um, on Windows, using ZAMP or WAMP, it's going to be found at uh, local disk C and then in the ZAMP or WAMP directory and then inside the Apache directory right here. Once you're inside here, go to the conf directory and then once you're inside here, uh, for step number one, there's going to be two main options. So I'm going to be showing you uh, these two options and I hope that um, by showing you uh, both options, it's going to be able to cover everyone and everyone's situation. So first, this is the preferred and uh, most likely best way to do it. So open up the extra directory if you have it and then go down to the http-vhosts.conf uh, file. Once you've got this open, it's going to look something like this. Now, if you don't have this file, don't worry. Um, in a few minutes, I'll be showing you how to actually set it up if you don't have this file. But for now, um, the instructions are going to be mostly the same, uh, whether or not you have it or not. So anyway, once you're inside this file, this is where you store, or this is where you will want to store most, if not all, of your virtual host uh, setups. So inside here, just go down to the bottom uh, under all these comments and create a new Apache directive for virtual host. It's going to look something like this. Um, it's an XML-like syntax. You say open uh, uh, less than sign, then you say virtual host, then you put an asterisk, and then you say colon, and then 80. And then you just close this off really straightforward, just like XML or HTML. You say virtual host just like this. So now we're saying that um, if a request has came through um, with port 80, then do the stuff inside here. So now you're going to specify your document root. So you simply say document root 
and then specify um, the directory which you want uh, your users to see when they go to that uh, URL. In this case, it's going to be C, websites, and then sample projects. So I'm going to copy this and paste it inside, inside here within, uh, within uh, double quotes or just quotes, right? And then once uh, you've got this uh, saved, uh, as I said, this right here is what your users will see when they go to that URL, okay? Then you specify uh, a server name. So you say server name right here, then you put your actual URL. So you say here sample-project.local for example, okay? And of course, this right here needs to match perfectly with um, the actual URL or host you intend to use. Okay, so once uh, once this is done, uh, you can then specify a new directive, uh, the uh, the directory directive. So you say right here directory. Then you're going to want to put once again um, the path to your project. So I'm going to copy this and put it right here. And then once you're inside here, you're going to essentially just specify uh, a bunch of uh, a bunch of options for um, how your files will be accessed. So um, uh, the actual lines of code or um, the directives I'll be uh, showing you is uh, most likely going to be okay for development environments. However, I do warn you, um, if you want to uh, deploy this to production, um, I recommend you read over each one of these lines and make sure they work for you. But anyway, I'm going to say options, then indexes, then follow sim links, then includes, and then exec CGI. Okay, um, of course, this right here, these may change for you. Um, you may want to remove some of these or add some more. Um, totally up to you, but this right here works for me. Then you say allow override and make this all, and then require, um, sorry, that's gonna be all, yep. Then we can say require all granted. So require all granted, just like this. And that is all for this section. Okay, once again, uh, these are gonna work fine for development, however, um, they may raise security risks uh, in terms of access for production environments. Anyway, um, that is basically all for the Apache side. We are done here. However, for option two, if you don't have this vhost.conf file, simply go back to your Apache extra directory or your conf directory, sorry, then open up the http.conf file instead. Um, if you can't find it here, just do a search on your system for this file. Once you've got it open, it's going to look something like this. Just scroll down to the bottom here and then include the exact same stuff inside that file. So I'll just cut this and paste it inside here. It's going to look something like this. And uh, this is going to work the exact same way because as we can see, if I was to scroll up, we can see that um, it simply, or this file simply just includes that vhost file anyway. So uh, putting it here or there doesn't matter too much, but preferably if you can um, put it inside your vhost.conf file instead. So now we are done on the Apache side, let's move on uh, to um, the host side of things. So once again, uh, this is the main step which is going to change between uh, different operating systems, but essentially you're going to want to find your hosts file. On Windows, it is found at um, your C drive, then Windows, System32, then Drivers, and then ETC. Now, it's going to be hosts right here, this file. I do recommend you make a copy or a backup of this file before proceeding. And also, um, it's going to uh, most likely going to be uh, need to be opened uh, with administrator privileges. So definitely keep those two things in mind. Um, once you've got a backup of the host file, simply open it in your text editor and it's going to look something like this. So now, in this file, um, you're going to simply say on the bottom here, you're going to say 127.0.0.1 then specify your host. So it's gonna be right here, of course, once again, sample-project.local. So you say sample-project.local. So now we're saying that in the browser, when we go to this right here, it's gonna to go to essentially this IP right here, okay? So of course, this right here, um, since we don't specify a port in the browser, it's gonna to default to port 80. 
So essentially, it's going to reach here, then, if, uh, sorry, it's going to reach here, and then from there, it's going to go into Apache. It's going to see this virtual host at port 80, like we specified. And then, of course, the server name here is going to kick in. We're going to see that uh, it's, it's going to see that they actually uh, match. And then it's going to do all the stuff you specify inside here. That's how it's, uh, sorry, and, uh, that's how it's going to work. Um, so now we are all done. We can simply just uh, restart the Apache server. So simply just press start in XAMPP or whatever your distribution has. And once it is restarted, you can go inside the browser and actually test it out. So I'm going to say HTTP. Then I'm going to say uh, right here. Uh, we are going to say uh, sample-project.local and as you can see here it's working perfectly fine. So um, that is how to set up virtual hosts with the Apache web server. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you later.